Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to another episode of ACS Revision in less than 10 minutes, hopefully. Well, in the last episode, gas rating of a G4 meter, I made it. I could actually explain it all in less than 10 minutes. So, this video, we're going to be looking at gas rating a U6 gas meter. But before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss any more of these videos. So, waffling now, so let's get on with finding out how to gas rate a U6 meter. Now, like again with the G4 meter, there are a few ways of gas rating. Remember, we're not doing apps yet because we can't use apps in the ACS center. So you need to know how to gas rate. And there's a long hand and a short cut and we'll look at both of them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to turn the appliance on full rate. Like we said for the G4 meter, if it was a cooker, we'd be putting individual rings on, not three. That's working pressure at the meter. And we would put on the grill in the oven, we'd do them all separate. Again, fire on high rate. Boiler, we would do it on heating and uh, hot water, not high and low settings. That's for flue gas analysing, not gas rating. So, after we've turned this appliance on full, we need to time how long it takes to do one full revolution of the test dial. Now, the test dial from start to finish is one cubic foot and it's broke up into segments. So, four down to 0 0.5 and then four on this way to one. So, no matter which segment it goes on to, you need to time how long it goes all the way around. So, if we started at number one, it needs to go back to one. If we started in the number between one and two, wait till it gets to two, and then time how long it gets around to do uh, the two again. So, you're on a full figure to give you a more accurate reading. So, an example, it's taken 40 seconds to go all the way around on the test dial. Uh, if this was a fire, it'd be a lot longer than 40 seconds, trust me. So, first thing we need to do is 3,600. 3,600 because that's the number of seconds in one hour, and we need to divide it by the example, which is 40. Now, you would put 20, 30, 100, 150, and it's always seconds. So, it's not two minutes, it's 120 seconds, okay? So, you always need to put the seconds there. So, if we do 3,600 divided by the 40, it comes out at 90. And that's 90 cubic feet an hour, and that's a gross figure. So, if the um, benchmark book for the boiler wants to know what the cubic feet an hour is, we've got 90. So it'll have rescue meters cubed or cubic feet. Now, we want to turn it into meters cubed, and there's a little figure to do that. So if we take the 90, and we times it by 0 0.028, the 0 0.028 turns cubic feet into meters cubed, it gives us 2.52 meters cubed an hour gross. And then we can revert back then to what we did for the G4. Because we can take the 2.52 times it by the carolific value of gas, which is 38.76, which comes out at 97.524 megajoules. And then we can take this 97.524, we can divide it by 3.6, because there are 3.6 megajoules in a kilowatt, and it comes out at 27.09 kilowatts gross. We can then take this 27.09, divide it by our 1.1, gives us 24.4 kilowatts net. So that is the, what we class the longhand way of doing it. So the shorthand way of doing it is, you can take your 3,600 and you can and times it by this figure of 1040. Then divide it by the number of seconds and it comes out at 93,600 BTUs. BTU stands for British Thermal Units. But we need to convert the BTUs into kilowatts. 
So if we take the 93,600 and divide it by 3412, the easiest way of remembering that is 3, 4 to 12. It's like dyslexic pie, really. Uh, which comes out at 27.43 kilowatts gross. We take the 27.43 divided by 1.1 gives us a 24.7 kilowatt net. And you notice they're slightly different. We've got 24.4. This comes out at 24.7. Okay, and it's all about this figure here. Now, you can also do this on the larger meters, okay? So if you've got a U16 meter and it says it's two meters cubed for one full revolution, you just need to put a two here. So it'd be two times 3,600 um, uh, times 1040 divided by your number of seconds. Because you will see this, a lot of trainers put one times 3,600 for the small meter, but well, that's not needed, is it? Because one time something is always that something. But if you do do it on the bigger meters, you would put a two. So it would be two times 3,600. And that's for your uh, U16 meter. If it's got the two meters cubed around the test dial. Now, just a few things to finish off about gas rating because I think I'm under the 10 minutes and I've got myself some time. Now, when we're gas rating an oven, make sure the oven door is open because you don't want the thermostat kicking in and ruining your gas rate. Also, the same for a top oven. So if your cooker's got a top oven as well, you need to do the same with that. And when it comes to the grill, obviously you want to be gas rating the top oven before you gas rate the grill because if you gas rate the grill, then it can affect the thermostat for the top oven. And again, make sure the doors are open. Now, in the training manuals for boilers, it says gas rate them in maximum and minimum. But the benchmark book says it wants it in hot water and central heating. Now, I've done gas rate in maximum and minimum. That's for flue gas analysing. Gas rating, central heating, combi boilers, what modulate, can help you diagnose faults. So if the customer rings you and says, uh, I've got no hot water, and you go to the boiler and you gas rate it, and it comes out that it's a full gas rate, then it might be the diverter valve passing and putting that heat into the central heating. And it's the same for if you find out that the gas rate is low then there could be some other situations, things like blocked plate heat exchangers. There can be loads of things. So gas rating can help you diagnose faults as well. I hope that helps. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If there is any other videos you want me to do in these 10 minutes, put them down in the comments. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps because I'm nearly at 9,000 subscribers now. So thanks to everybody who has subscribed. But don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next 10 minute. Cheers, guys.